Hello and welcome back to my spooky mansion. Things have been interesting since I won this in a strange contest. Funnily enough, my dog is still at the old house. I tried to bring her over, but she sniffed the mansion once and refused to go in. Dogs can be so silly sometimes. Not to mention someone keeps eating my cereal and I found a torn dress in my laundry the other day. Can't say I remember buying it. But what's strangest of all is that ever since I moved in, I've been having these instances where I space out at midnight. Like I sort of lose myself for a few minutes, as if I become an entirely different person. Almost like I'm... possessed. But anyway, it's October, so let's check out another spooky nostalgic game. Horror of the High Seas is a Scooby-Doo game that I fondly remember for a variety of reasons. I wish I could say they were all good. But unfortunately, as fitting for Halloween as it is, this game has haunted me ever since I first played it. I remember it being so difficult for my child self that every time I gave it a go, it would just lead to endless frustration. I haven't touched it since, but maybe this can be a good way to come to terms with that which once scarred me. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you might remember that we checked out a very similar game for Christmas last year. Let's look back at how that went. That's the Queen of England! Yeah, it wasn't great. If I thought Horror of the High Seas was hard, Haunts for the Holidays was unbearable. Even as an adult, I really struggled with that one. So needless to say, I'm very scared to check this one out. Welcome to Horror of the High Seas, sometimes mistakenly called Horror on the High Seas. That sounds so much better, doesn't it? But first, we have to mention how this, Haunts for the Holidays, and another game called Mayan Monster Mayhem were all released in different parts. Haunts for the Holidays was the odd one out, only being three parts long rather than four. But given how hard the stages in it were, it took significantly longer to beat. So let's give this one a try. The first episode is called The Ghost Pirate Attacks, and it starts rather abruptly. Shaggy and Scooby are on a cruise, but they're passed out after eating too much. Relatable enough but a green ghost ship pulls up. When they wake up, they find that they're alone, but they barely have time to process it because they notice the ship and a creepy pirate captain appears. Then the game begins. Now we find ourselves in an overhead view where we move Shaggy and Scooby across the ship to find items that can help us get away. You can't let the captain notice you, otherwise Shaggy and Scooby get scared. That makes them lose health. There is absolutely no way to recover health once it's lost, so make sure you lose as little as possible. Thankfully, you can press the S key to save your game, so you don't have to start all over again if you lose. Just make sure you save with a comfortable amount of health, because that gets retained. But one thing that's great about these overhead sections is that you can get through the stage in one of two ways. You can either distract the captain by ringing this bell, allowing Shaggy to tear this flag rope down, or you can use this hook to get to a sword. Bit of replay value here. Pretty good so far. So once you swing into this open window, you get a cutscene. Shaggy and Scooby meet Captain Lawrence, who was sleeping when everyone disappeared. If this game teaches us anything, it's that ghosts can't catch you when you're asleep. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Oh, come on. And Lawrence's skin-colored eyes almost make him look like a ghost himself. Highly suspicious, but he's only the first suspect. So Shaggy and Scooby head to the bridge to, you guessed it, look for clues. Now we get another overhead segment. This one's less threatening than the other. There's a window here, and we can either use the hammock and umbrella to swoosh right in, or we can mess with the lights and use the string that holds them. It's easy to figure out, but the difficulty is about to spike. Now we have a minigame where we have to sneak past this one pirate henchman. We do this by watching his movements and carefully navigating the room, hitting the spacebar to duck into open spaces beneath the control panel. You make your way to the door and try not to be seen. I've never been good at stealth missions, so I can shamefully say my child self never made it past this stage. But the question is, is it easier as an adult? Eh, maybe a little. One issue I have with this is how the space Shaggy and Scooby can walk through isn't clearly defined. Look how hard it is to round this corner. They keep running into the wall while I'm trying to be quick. And no, you can't hide in this space. Don't try it. Heck, I couldn't even get them to hide under this control panel. Once you're halfway through the room, you just have to book it to the door. It can be a pain if you mess up and have to wait for this guard to walk his full route again. 
But oh well. They reach the door and slowly open it, but the guard is so polite and waits for them to leave before he notices. He loses sight of them, but the captain calls him into a mini submarine and they take off underwater. Fun fact, according to the Scooby-Doo wiki, dropping a mini sub into water like that is extremely dangerous. It could damage the vehicle and hurt the people inside. <laughs> Like Scoob, the pirates killed themselves, man! But we see Shaggy and Scooby hiding in a hilarious way. Then they're approached by Black Manta. Nah, it's just a regular diver. That brings us to the end of episode one. But if you want to test yourself, there's a timed mode too. It's not too hard if you've beaten it once and know what to do. But let's keep the boat moving. The second episode is called Neptune's Nest. Now that sounds awesome. But unfortunately, we're facing my biggest fear and going underwater. Yikes! So the diver turns out to be a woman named Caroline Moore. She leads Shaggy and Scooby into another mini-sub to follow the ghosts. Now we get a change of pace where we control the submarine underwater. Interesting music, too. So we have two different screens we can travel through, and we have to utilize the aquatic life to get through a gate. I'm sure this abnormally large lobster is a huge scientific discovery, but we're too busy chasing ghost pirates to report it. And jumpin' jellyfish, Batman! But we can either snag this lobster and use it to scare the shark away, or we can go for the cannon behind the giant clam. Then we enter this cave, otherwise known as Neptune's Nest, that Caroline says is a resting place for the pirate Whitebeard. She sure seems to know a lot about this place. But whatever, let's get back to our usual format. We have to work this mechanism by exploring the cave. We can try to go this way, but up, oh, it's the spider. But actually, you can torch the web. I feel bad destroying an animal's home like that, so we can just make a ladder to climb up. Once we're through, we find the pirates uncovering treasure. But up, oh, it's the spiders. The arrival of a much smaller arachnid than the one before is enough to make Shaggy and Scooby scream. To be honest, if I lived in a world where spiders got this big, I probably wouldn't even be scared of one this tiny. But maybe it's just another case of deep sea gigantism. Even the spiders are affected. But the captain activates a waterfall, so we have to get out of there. In the next episode, that is. This one is called Reef Relief. Shaggy wakes up being dragged by Scooby away from the flood. They then jump back in their mini-sub and sail away, leaving Caroline behind. Eh, she's probably the captain anyway. Now we get another submarine stage, but it's only one screen this time. We don't have multiple options either, but we have to get rid of two sharks. You set off a series of events to make a shark chase a school of fish, then you use yet another oversized crustacean to scare the other shark away. It's a crab this time. I actually fully believe those can get that big. And you do have to get dangerously close to both creatures to use them. It isn't super clear when you're supposed to hit the space bar. But when we get through, we return to the ship and find someone running by. He hides in this pipe, but you throw a hook at him to make him come out. <laughs> Like, Scoob, I think we just committed a murder! But it turns out to be a kid named Tommy who stole a bit of treasure. We get some good humor, too. What do you want? What do you guys want? Yeah, like a triple-decker pimento and chocolate sandwich sounds good to me. <laughs> but the power goes out and the ship heads toward a series of rocks. That means we have to get the power running again before we crash. So then we're faced with the most confusing stage in the entirety of this adventure. We have to get the engines running by figuring out where a bunch of broken objects go. You have to be very specific with wherever you choose to place an item. Then you pull one of three levers to see if the change you made made a difference. Since the instructions don't tell you how this stage works, you have to figure it out by doing it yourself. But you have to use your trial and error wisely, because if you hit a lever, you run the risk of being hurt by a rat. That might make you reluctant to try anything, but it isn't entirely clear where you can or can't place an object, so you might find yourself hitting random spaces in the hopes that it does something. The problem is, if you're in close enough proximity to a lever, Shaggy will pull it even if that's not what you wanted him to do. Then you risk summoning the rat. It took me a moment to realize I could place an item by moving behind this machine rather than doing it from the front. That was my mistake. But this is one of those stages that seems really hard when you're playing it, but after you beat it, you realize how easy in concept it was and you feel really stupid. Half the battle is understanding how the stage works in the first place, and taking risks. You have to ask yourself, do you really think it's safe to pull that lever? Hmm. 
once that's done, you reach the ghost ship and have to board it. That brings us to the final episode. In hindsight, this one wasn't too hard, you just might not get it on your first try. Still, I hope we don't have to pull any more levers from here on out. So here's Pirate Ship of Fools. Get very used to this screen, you'll be seeing it a lot. So first things first, we have to get inside. You can either use this cannon or an ore to set off a series of events to get in. I sure hope cannons don't count as a means of pollution. But once you're inside, Shaggy finds out that the green glow of the ship is only caused by neon lights. But the captain shows up and we have to sneak by them. While this stealth section is easy when you know what to do, it can be really difficult if you don't. <laughs> But you really just have to wait for the captain to walk by, then you go downstairs. Simple enough. This game really utilizes the strategy of convincing you something is harder than it is. But then we find a secret room and discover that the pirates have scuba gear, which basically verifies who the ghost really is. Regardless, we still have to catch her, I mean it, so then we go back to the first section of the episode and find this big flag we can hide with. We have to use it whenever a pirate walks onto the screen. We have to take out the captain and her two guards, so we have to make use of everything around the ship to pick them off one at a time. Now this is cool, a Scooby-Doo game where you get to design traps for the villains to fall into. We need more of these. You just have to move around and hide whenever an enemy walks in. Then when they show up, you can activate a trap you created. I like that you can just blow this one up. But then the captain shows up, and if you think you can just throw this net on her directly, you're tragically mistaken. Though I'm pretty sure that would work in real life. You actually have two different options for how you choose to catch her. You can either hang out up here and drop the net, or if you chose not to drop the cannon in the earlier stage, you can blast it at her. Amazing how that little decision actually comes back into play. Good move, Scooby-Doo. So once you've caught the captain, you unmask it to discover it's actually Caroline. Yeah, the scuba gear kind of gave it away. But it's fine, because it was so late in the game anyway. I was pretty sure she was behind this high seas horror. Hey, he... kinda said the title. But she wanted to steal the treasure in Neptune's nest, and she trapped the other passengers in the cargo hold. So now that we've caught her, we get her to say the famous line. Well, I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kid. And that stupid mutt. <laughs> then Shaggy and Scooby take a picture before enjoying the rest of their cruise. But Scooby puts on the diving gear for one last spook. That brings us to the end of Horror of the High Seas. Now, what can be said about all this? Honestly, it's pretty good. It isn't as hard as I remember it being when I was much younger, but it's still a decent challenge. A lot of it comes down to figuring out what you have to do in each circumstance. Once you do, you can just run with it. It's great that you have different options for many of the stages, too. You can play again to see what other decisions you can make to move forward. The animation and voice acting are also really good. It feels like a proper episode of a Scooby-Doo show. It's charming and really enjoyable to play through. Yes, it's a little challenging, but it's still a really good time. Now if you'll excuse me, I think I better go get ready for- Oh no, I wasn't watching the time. It can't be midnight already. Oh no, I have to- uh, uh... Oh, ugh, I spaced out again. No idea why that keeps happening. Oh well. Anyway, I'm gonna go lay down and deal with my sudden headache. 
I hope you'll stick around as we cover even more spooky games this month. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, which are linked in the description below, and tune in to our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory. I believe them bones on me. Some say we're born into the grave. I feel so alone, gonna end a big old pile of them. Hey, what was that sound?